Science, technology and engineering play vital parts in our lives. They meet us at every turn, from manufacturing, communications, transport and medicine. Whether it's at home or at work, it's difficult to imagine a world without them. Science and engineering have many facets, and there are some, especially in the field of medicine and health, that will directly benefit the individual. One of these is bioengineering. But bioengineers not only use their expertise to invent and improve new diagnostic tools, but also to help solve some of the major health issues facing us today. Amongst these are some of the many problems encountered by people who are spinal injured. And in this programme, we're going to look at how bioengineering can help improve their quality of life. An estimated 40,000 people are paralysed from a spinal cord injury in Britain. Paralysis can lead to secondary medical complications, which may not only reduce the quality of life, but the individual's lifespan. This can leave the body less fit for spinal repair, should it become possible in the future. Recent developments in functional electrical stimulation, or FES for short, have created increased opportunities for the spinal injured. Although not new, bioengineers have now improved and enhanced FES to provide a greater level of physical fitness. So, what exactly is it? It's the only way to produce exercise in paralysed muscles. We've developed a recumbent tricycle with a stimulator that is attached to four groups of electrodes on each leg and stimulation is applied in order to cause flexion and extension of the leg in order to propel the pedals. There were several research groups around the world working on FES for people with spinal injury. So it was very much a scientific field. We felt that this wasn't benefiting them sufficiently and that if we could only uh, bring them together they would see that FES could be used as a sport and as a recreation. So we felt that if we could bring everybody together for a sporting event we could demonstrate this idea. The venue would be the UWIC Stadium in Cardiff and the first FES Sports Day was born. Teams from a number of centres, including Britain, Germany and Australia, have travelled for many hours to get to the stadium. And as soon as they arrive, they begin by assembling their rowing and cycling machines, all equipped with the new advanced FES systems. Yeah, we came because we want to, to win this competition, you know. And we have, uh, we have put a lot of work in this, in training uh, work, and also in technical installations and uh, fi uh, financial efforts we have put in this project and so we are here now. We are here because we hope to create uh, more publicity for FES. We uh, have realized that not too many people as well as in research as um, private users know FES and want to make it more, yes, more no known to more people. The bioengineers in each research team have adapted the tricycles specifically for paraplegics. So how does FES cycling work? In, in these people they all have electrodes which they stick onto the legs over the muscles that they want to stimulate uh, and those are stimulated by passing pulses of current through. So they have a little box which is a stimulator uh, with batteries which, which develops the stimulating currents. The uh, tricycles that the patients are going to use have a shaft encoder which is connected to the stimulator and so the stimulator knows when to stimulate the muscles in order that they contract in the right way and propel the pedals. There's also a throttle on the tricycles which they use for controlling the intensity so they have control over how fast they go. Every machine is checked by the bioengineer in each team before the cyclist goes out onto the track. And as there are differences between the individual's muscles, the program is adjusted for each cyclist. The first day of the two-day event begins with participants joining their teams. And for some, it's an opportunity to try out the cycle and rowing machines for the first time.
Robin Gibbons, has been a paraplegic since 2001, following a serious car accident. He now leads the integration of FES rowing into mainstream UK leisure. Um, basically, we've been um, displaying what FES rowing is all about. Um, for, for those people that are currently involved with FES, i.e. the cyclists, um, they've, a few of them have had a, a go on the rowing machines. Um, for those that haven't been involved in FES, what we've been able to do are um, simple motor point tests of the legs. What, what, what a motor point is, is um, an area of the, the leg that is known to be uh, prolific in nerves supplying the muscles. So if you can stimulate this area, the nerves then contract the muscle of the leg. A good response from this test will show that the person will be an excellent candidate for training on the FES rowing or cycling machines. Before this can happen, however, there is still a great deal of hard preparatory work to do. But will it all be worth it? Angela has used the wheelchair for 17 years, and for her, the training was a real struggle. Well, I started off um, a year of just muscle training. Because I'd been in the chair for such a long time, the project was initially started for post two year injury. Well, at that time I was post 14 years, so it was a, a huge length of time I'd actually spent in the chair. So for the first year I'd just done purely exercising of this, the muscle groups, the hamstrings and the gluteus muscles just to build them up, to be able to then do the cycling. So I was a year muscle building and then went back for a test out on a bike to see whether I could push the cycle round. And, and I did, and it was great. So that was when I, I got my bike and I was able to then train on a bike at home then. So it was, it was exciting stuff. Whereas when they begin, they probably can't even turn the pedals against no resistance. After a few months of this training, um, they can start cycling in places like this at a reasonable speed. We've got about four different types of tricycle. We've got tricycles with two wheels at the front and tricycles with one wheel at the front. Different designs, different weights. So there are technical, the technical differences here as well, of course, training differences, which are very important. participated in that um, cushion game there and it was the best thing in my whole life I've done since my accident in the wheelchair. I used to play Aussie rules football and it was a bit similar and uh, I had a really good fun doing it there you know and I wish I could play that game every week of the year. When you're playing the, the game on the, on the pitch there it's fun you forget about what you're doing you forget everything you're just in there you're having a laugh and everybody's having a laugh. It doesn't matter how fast you are at 100 metres or how long you can go around the kilometre tracking. Everybody's on a level playing field. Before my accident, I, I was really competitive and I still am. I still have a fiery streak in me and I still want to win. Anything I take part in, I want to win. But because I don't really have control over this, the, I kind of have to take a back step and go, I'm here. That's you know, that's great. I'm just taking part and I'm meeting everybody and, you know, and I've brought my family here with me. So they're meeting other people in wheelchairs and seeing them taking part in the same event that their mum's in. So, yes, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking forward to the whole event. There's lots, lots to do here, lots going on at the moment. The physical and psychological benefits are obvious. But this type of FES may not suit everyone. Some people here today have not come to compete in the events, but to find out what FES is all about. Um, well, basically, I've been sort of listening in on what's involved, and uh, it's quite positive. Uh, and, and Stuart was a little unsure at the start as to whether he would be suitable to ride a tricycle. After his muscles were tested, he was keen to have a go, and it wasn't long before he'd completed several times round the track. I developed a special bike, especially for 
people in a wheelchair who can use their arms and legs together. Uh, this is important because with FES, uh, if you start cycling, most of the uh, patients don't have enough power in the legs, so they have to train and to. And even if they are trained, they sometimes have problems with a little hill or if they want to make a bigger round, um, then if their muscles are tired, they are stuck. And if they also use their arms, they don't have the problem. So they have a higher speed, they can uh, uh, cope with longer distances. It also works without electrostimulation. So for spinal cord injured with, uh, with some force in their leg, but also MS or stroke patients or polio, uh, all kinds of different uh, diseases or handicaps. And um, actually that's a kind of spin-off of the project. Yeah, it's a really exhilarating ride in actual fact. I enjoyed it. Um, because it's got the FES uh, included with the actual pan cycling, so it's a full aerobic exercise. With electrostimulation, you really get the muscle pumping and you will have under the lesion a big difference and in the total body. It's two different things. So under the lesion you will get muscle growing, blood pumping, the skin is uh, looking uh, healthier because there's more blood going through. So you get a better cardiovascular result, your lungs are pumping, you will just feel better also because your hormones are getting better uh, level. Um, well, I've been working with Robin doing the rowing for about five months and um, just to basically just sort of support him and just try and raise the sort of profile and awareness for the FES rowing because it's sort of, I think it is as big as the sort of cycling side of things. The uh, indoor rowing championships in November is coming up this year and um, if you guys competed in it last year and the year before from sort of different spinal injury centres or whatever and um, hoping to compete in that so for the 2k should be good. Um, it'd be interesting to see if the FES sort of take, you know, starts playing a bigger role in the uh, Olympics itself. The whole concept with uh, doing FES right from the start was for the three potential killers for disability, which is obesity, type 2 diabetes and coronary heart disease. Um, but what, I, what I've found since then is that there are peripheral benefits that, that weigh and exceed even those. For example, being involved in a sport that's an able-bodied sport has a feel-good factor. Seeing your legs um, toning up and having shape again is a feel-good factor. So there's all these things that, that um, uh, are peripheral benefits that we hadn't really, that we, we, we knew were there but we'd never really looked into. The winner of the 100 metres is someone who I think has been an inspiration to many of us for a long time and that's Carmen Brook. For all these competitors, the FES Sports Day has been an enjoyable, exciting and challenging experience. It's also been an excellent opportunity to make new contacts and new friends. This is the new world record, I can say, of 11 minutes. And two seconds. Well, what we hope is that everybody who's, who's come to the event goes away feeling that it was an exciting event and they'd like to do it again. Um, and if they take that message back to their home countries, that would be good. And then we hope that this video is going to show what is possible and that we'll spread the message that FES sport is something which people with spinal cord injuries should start thinking of doing. As we've seen, the new advanced FES cycling and rowing machines are producing excellent results and are helping to prevent some of the complications faced by long-term wheelchair users. There's no doubt that the psychological and physical benefits are significant and activities like these can only help to improve the long-term health of the spinal injured. It's like anything, you, if you end up in a wheelchair, you always think you're the only one in a wheelchair and every person in a wheelchair probably thinks like that. Everybody that's ever had a stroke probably thinks that. Um, but it's not the case at all. There's a lot of people um, with a lot in common and things like this actually prove it. You get together and you do actually feel a lot better about yourself. And I'm sure other people will get the, the same response. I highly, re highly recommend it. And once they start on it, don't give up because the first, first three or four months are quite hard. But once you get into your routine, get used to getting on and off the trike, your legs build up. It's well worth it, so if they do start, keep going. The event in Cardiff was a huge success. 
I had no idea that we would see races done in such short times and I was delighted to see so many of the competitors enjoying the games despite quite large differences in their abilities. They nevertheless clearly were all enjoying it. But it sets us a challenge and the challenge is to move this away from the research groups and get it taken up by people with spinal cord injury for themselves. They have to take this on and they have to turn it into something they do in their daily lives. To start off with, you've got to have the commitment, the motivation, the, the consistency and that there, but if you've got all that there and you've got the enthusiasm, go for it. Just go for it and do it there and you'll enjoy yourself and you'll forget that you're all your troubles and you're in a wheelchair. Yes, it has its, its difficult moments, it's difficult getting in and out the bike, but everything's difficult when you're in a wheelchair. There's nothing easy. Um, and it's just one of these things that you, you just have to go for. And uh, I've loved it, I've loved every minute of it. Bioengineers the world over are continuing in their research to make advances and breakthroughs in healthcare technology, not only for the spinal injured, but to find solutions to a whole range of clinical problems, enabling everyone to live a better and healthier life.